in refraction, um, this is what happens when, uh, let's actually define it here. So I'll just write it in blue, I think. So it happens when a wave, uh, in this case here, we're gonna say it goes through a medium or it goes through a transition actually, let's say. So it goes through a transition. So when I mean a transition, I mean it goes sort of, it goes into a different medium, a different material. Um, what will happen with that wave is it will either speed up or slow down. And this is what we actually call refraction. So uh, maybe we could define it probably more formally by saying it's the change in speed of a wave when it travels from one material to another. This is really what's going on. So in this case right here, let's just say I have my straight line like we were using before. And again, I'm still going to define a normal. So we always have to define that. So let's say we have, this is my surface here. This could be, I don't know, glass maybe. Whoops, I'm gonna write it in black, I think. Go. So I have maybe this is glass and this is air, for example. Well then my ray coming in, so maybe, whoops, maybe this is my one coming in here like this. So maybe it goes something like, I don't know, like that perhaps. So this right here would be my theta i. I'm still gonna define that. So I'm still gonna say theta i equals the incident angle. So this so far looks just like reflection. I was doing the same thing. However, we're going to have a theta r, which is no longer a reflected angle. It's called the refracted angle. So now what happens here is my wave or my ray or whatever this is, maybe it's light, it goes through the material. So it goes into it. So it has to be a material that allows light to go through it or allows a wave to go through it. In this case, if this is air and glass, this is very likely light coming in. And I can tell you that this is the one thing you know for sure is that theta i is not equal to theta r unless these two things are the same material or at least have what we're gonna call an index of refraction that's the same. So theta i is usually not equal to theta r in this case, so it's not reflection. So maybe, maybe for example, it's like this, maybe it's, you know, like that. So this right here would still be called theta r. Whoops, not i, but r. Just gotta write properly, there we go, theta r. So we can see then that this is a larger angle and this is a smaller angle. So what we first have to do is, I think it helps to define something. So let's define what we call an index of refraction. That's really important, I think. We have to sort of define this. So um, this basically, it tells you about the speed. Really what it does, it's gonna tell you about the speed of light, let's say, or the wave in one material compared to the speed of light in a vacuum, for example. So for light, maybe we'll do that like this. So for light, this index of refraction, by the way, is gonna be called N and has no units. Okay, so that's going to be the index of refraction is going to be called n. So for light, we're going to say that n equals, in this case, it's going to be c over v. That's going to be an equation we need to know, where c equals the speed of light in a vacuum. In other words, that's as fast as light can go. Okay, so it's the speed of light in a vacuum. Uh, I think it actually only has one C. I'll have to check that out later, but in any case, speed of light in a vacuum. In other words, it's that magic speed of three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And V here, that's a speed of light in your material. In your material. So in this case, whatever you're looking at here, so whatever whatever is happening here. That's the speed of light in whatever material you're looking at. Now, uh, what's really important then, I mean, if this is speed of light in a vacuum, this speed has to be less than this one always because the speed of light in a vacuum is as fast as you can go. So because of that, this always has to be less. So a value divided by a value less than it is always gonna be greater than one. So that is a key thing here. 
that n is always greater than 1. Or I suppose it could be equal to 1. Because if it's equal to 1, that means you know the light goes the same speed in your material as in a vacuum. So that is really important here, that the n is always greater than or equal to 1. I think that's a really key sort of thing here. Uh, for example, n for air, you know, in the air, for example, we often say that, I mean, it's not exactly 1, but we say it's pretty much 1. I mean, it's approximately, but we're going to use index of refraction for air is going to be equal to 1, and we're going to set it at. So that's going to be sort of a key sort of thing here. So if ever you calculated that n is less than 1, stop, you've made a mistake. Or you've just invented something new where actually light goes faster in that material than it does in a vacuum. Uh, which, as far as we know, that can't happen. So, let's define now what's called Snell's Law. There's a lot of different ways of looking at it. Um, when I first learned it, we called it n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. That's one way of looking at it. But I actually prefer this way. So what if I took my n's, by the way, this is what happens when you go from one material to another. So maybe we'll define it again here. We'll just, uh, I'll make my little line here again. Like this, and I'll have my little normal. That's my little dotted line. And I have my ray coming in. Whew like this. Maybe it goes different angle here. And now here I'm going to call it theta 1 and here I'm going to call it theta 2. So I've got sort of material 1 and I've got material 2 because this doesn't have to be just air and glass. It could be anything. This could be I don't know, one type of water and another type of water. Maybe it's light going through it. Or maybe it's, you know, one kind of uh, material, another kind of material, and maybe a wave goes through it of some kind. It doesn't matter what. A lot of times we use light as an example, but it doesn't have to be. But in this case, let's use light. So whatever material 1 is, we're going to say that it has a value n1. That's going to be its, its index of refraction of material 1. And this one right here, we're going to call it n2. So we can see how n1 and the angle theta1 are related to this refracted angle 2 and material 2. So this is, this is a version of Snell's law. I personally prefer a different version of Snell's law and it goes like this. So it's the same thing. If you actually took your n1 and you actually decided to divide it by n2. So let's just say you took this thing right here and you decide to move the n's on the same side. Then you'd end up with sine theta2 over sine theta1. not sure just do the algebra slowly but it turns out you have your n1 over n2 sine theta 2 over sine theta 1 that's the same thing as this the reason I like this one better is because it's more powerful because you can also add some extra pieces to it you can actually say it's a v2 over v1 which is also lambda 2 over lambda 1 this I think is much more powerful so I like this version of Snell's law even more a nice easy trick to remember then is what happens here that the ends, like n1 over 2, they go one way and the rest of them all go the opposite way. So if you did n1 over 2, then this all goes 2 over 1, 2 over 1, 2 over 1. Now what are all these different letters? Well, we should try to remember them. We have n, that's the index of refraction. That's the first thing. Now that we should know, we just learned it. It has no units. We have theta, that's the angle either of reflection, uh, sorry, either of incidence or refraction. So that's just going to be measured in degrees. We have V, that's the speed. That's the speed of the wave in one material or the other. And the speed is written as in meters per second. Remember, the subscript just tells you in what material it's in. But what's important is what the angle, that theta represents the angle, V is the speed, and lambda is the wavelength. in that material. So wavelength in material 2 and wavelength in material 1. So that would be measured in meters. So this is Snell's law, a useful version. But if you remember this equation, uh, the wave equation V equals F lambda. What we've basically said here is that uh, we know how lambda changes and we know how V changes. And you might be wondering, well, what happens with F, the frequency? This is another really important thing here. 
the frequency does not change. The frequency actually remains the same. So as a wave goes from one material to another, the frequency remains exactly the same. And what that does for you, it tells you then that, well, if the frequency is the same, if V goes up, lambda must go down. Or if the frequency stays the same, if V goes down, lambda must go up. That's really what it helps you to know. But the frequency remains the same no matter what else you look at. Frequency doesn't change. Everything else does. So the speeds do and the wavelengths do. And in fact, you can look at the angles and you can see how they all change depending on the difference or this ratio sorry, of index of refraction. So this is how they're all related to each other. And what's cool then is you can use just one side. So maybe you need, maybe you have a question where you only know the indices of refraction and you want just the speeds, you know, what happens in speed two. Well then forget about this piece, just say n1 over n2 equals v2 over v1. So you can use whichever sort of, there's like four things here and you just use whichever ones you need. So what we're gonna do next is go over an example. So we're gonna see Snell's law in action.